Hello, it's Sisfolk. Time to enjoy card making with me. Are you not fond of working with solid stamps because your prints don't ever have the result you want? Then watch this video. I will use Carla Creatie's Basics collection with basic squares and circles to demonstrate today. Tips for stamping with different inks and papers as well as ideas to use these squares and circles for making swatches of your inks. I also added English and Dutch subtitles. Click the CC button. Click op de CC knop om de ondertitels aan te zetten. First, let me show you how to get the best stamp print using your solid stamps. When you have a new stamp set and get it out of the package, they are very sticky and shiny. It is good that they are so sticky, that means you have a good photopolymer stamp. They are mostly heavier than acrylic stamps and less stretchy, so they give very good stamp impressions. Only when you stamp the first time using such stamps and solid stamps in particular, you will have to condition them to get a good print. Let me show you how you are not supposed to stamp solid stamps when they are brand new. Here I have two of the same pieces of paper, both smooth BCP printer paper. This stamp came right out of the package. I did not do anything with it, just cling it to a clear block. So I start by adding water-based ink onto the stamp. Here I use a red color memento dye ink. The ink pad is juicy, that is perfect. I apply enough ink. When stamping water-based inks, you will have to let the ink soak into the paper. So let it sit a little bit longer than you actually want. See what we have. We don't want this. The ink is not solid and we can see the marks of the last dab of ink. We want a better result. So what you want to do when you have a new stamp, and this is also a new one, what you want to do is condition the stamp. There are multiple ways to do it. When the stamps are made in the factory, there is put some kind of resist around the stamp and you want to remove that on the stamping side. The easiest way to condition the stamp is to rub over it with your finger. You can also use an eraser for conditioning. Just rub over the stamp. A microfiber cloth with short fibers and some water also does the trick. It is also a perfect way for cleaning your stamps. You can also use a stamp cleaner for conditioning. If you are using your stamp the first time with an embossing ink or Versamark ink, you can start right away. These inks are so sticky, they will work perfect the first time immediately. And after that, the stamp is fine for next use. I will clean now the same stamp that I stamped with red memento ink and condition that as well. Now I ink it up with the same ink. I add a lot of it and very smooth. Now I give the ink the time to soak into the paper. So let it sit and be patient. You can already see this one is better. The difference is obvious. Same ink, same stamp, but with the result we want. So, if your print is not what you wanted, try this first. Versa Magic is a different kind of ink. It is a water-based pigment ink and this is more sticky. It stays wet longer. So you can use it as well for heat embossing. This ink is perfect as well for using on the stamp in press dies. The ink sticks to the metal as well. I apply a lot for a good coverage. Stamp firmly and try not to slip, because this ink can be slippery on smooth paper. So you see a perfect stamped square. Versamatic is a chalk ink. So when it dries up, the color will tone down a bit. You can see the difference when I hold my old swatch next to it. Here I stamp with distress ink. 
This is the color Candied Apple on the same smooth DCP printer paper. Make sure the inking is smooth, so there are no lines of ink on the stamp. You can pant on the stamp to moisten it a little bit. This also has to sink into the paper. That is for most water-based inks, whereas pigment inks lay on top of the paper. Meanwhile, I will clean the stamp that I used for the Versa Magic ink. I use a baby wipe to clean most ink off, but baby wipes have fibers that I don't like at all. These fibers will stay behind on the stamp and they will show on your next impression if you don't get them off. So after getting most ink off the stamp, we need to clean it some more, rub it off with your finger or use a damp cloth. Now let's remove the stamp with a distress ink. See a different result. Not that smooth as the memento ink, but that is just because this is a distress ink. It has different features. Now let's make a swatch for the candied apple distress oxide ink. This ink is not especially meant for stamping, but you see, also that works. And remember, this is just smooth paper, not watercolor paper. These stamps are perfect for making swatches of your inks. If you cut an amount of cards in the same size and stamp a solid stamp on them, you will have a nice swatch collection of your ink. You can put a hole in them and the metal ring will keep them together. Also stamping on a big sheet of paper is a possibility. These circle solid stamps are very useful for making swatches for your embossing powders or distress glaze. I have these new jars of distress glaze and I want to put a sample on the jar so I can see from on the top what is in. What I will do is take a circle die that fits the circle shape. Then die cut a few circles but also cut out one in the middle of a larger piece of paper. It looks like it is not economical, but it is in the long run. This is an effective way for stamping these circles. To keep it all in place, I take some masking tape. This is the masking tape I use for stamping, masking, also on my envelopes and also for keeping small dies in place. What you do is cut a piece off and put it on the back of the paper with the hole in it. Sticky side up. It will hold my circle pieces in place while stamping. But before putting a die cut circle in it, I place the solid circle stamp in the die cut opening. The solid stamp will fit in exactly and fall into place on the spot we want to stamp. I can pick up the stamp with the lid of the stamping platform, put in the circle die cut pieces and stamp as many circles as you need over and over again. This way I can stamp swatches for colors of inks and in this case with Versa Mark ink to be able to heat emboss the embossing glaze. And if I would like, I could also do this for embossing powders. The next circle can now be stamped and inked in exactly the same spot. This way I can do multiple inkings of first mark ink and put the embossing powder on top when finished. I did the heat embossing off camera and put circles of double sided tape on the back of my circles. When you peel off half of the circle, you can stick the circle in one go on the perfect spot. Press down the sticky part when in place. And next pull the rest of the backing off. These are gorgeous primary embossing glaze colors. I have a great idea with this red one. I will show you in the next video. Well, that's great, isn't it? No waste of ink or embossing powders this way. Without these stamps, you would have to do it on a card with a larger area of embossing and cut it out and stick it on the lid. You can do that too, of course, but then you would have waste. I hope you are now prepared to work with solid stamps and make great creations with them. Using swatches for different inks on different papers in different colors will help you enormously in picking good color combinations. In the next video I will have all kind of card making ideas and all different techniques 
to use basic shape stamps. You will find this video in the description box or in my Carla Creaties playlist. Also links to the products can be found in the description box. Links naar de producten kun je vinden in de omschrijving onder al mijn video's. Het zijn affiliate links. Je betaalt geen hogere prijs, maar ik krijg er wel een klein percentage aan inkomen van, waarmee ik weer nieuwe producten kan kopen om nieuwe video's mee te maken. Thank you for watching! I will see you in the Carla Creaties Basic Shapes Inspiration video. Bye bye!